sauteuring wine that needs just a little bit of salt. You got to admit that pretty ass. Oh, wait a minute, you know I forgot the most important thing? Yes. Oh, it's looking good. I guarantee that's a fine one. Oh, boy. Hello there, I'm Justin Wilson. Back before I had a cooking show on television or had written my first cookbook, I told stories while I was giving talks as a safety engineer, which I was then and still am now. People seem to like my Cajun stories, which please me no end because I have always admired and respected the Cajun people I've known all my life. I'm one half Cajun myself. I made several albums of humorous Cajun stories. I believe I had as much fun making the album covers. On one, I rode a rocket. On another, I lassoed an alligator. You might have noticed that I like to tell stories while I'm cooking. Everybody needs to laugh at least once a day. It's good for the heart and probably the digestion too, I guarantee. The show you're about to see was made for Mississippi Educational TV 25 years ago. It's all about cooking a roast pig, and I guess you can tell from my hat that it's a Christmas show. That don't matter. You can cook this pig for some other special occasion, too. Hi, y'all. Ah! Uh, Joyeux Noël. That means uh, Merry Christmas with you. It's Christmas time, and it takes a lot of good food to feed them Cajuns. I guarantee. So I invited this fella here to kind of help out. Now, when you want to cook a pig like this, it's not all that hard, but you got to be sure you, you pick the right kind of pig. Get one that the butcher will clean up real good for you like this one. And also to uh, get a white pig or a red pig. Uh, try not to get a black one because you look like you need a shave all the time if you don't look out. <laughs> Now, this one right here weighs between 10 and 12 pounds, and he'll feed just about that many people, maybe a little bit more, depending on who it is. Us Cajun, you know, we eat a lot more than that. And you know, we love to do things like this down where I live, and I never will forgot last Christmas, I got a friend who had a boy cheering that he sent to LUS. <laughs> and uh, he, he done mortgaged the farm and everything else to get him there. And when he sent him off there, he said, look, you can't brought yourself home because we ain't got no money. What you got to did is just stay there until you get through with school. He said, okay, Papa. Well, he stayed there until the Christmas holiday brought himself, and he sent a card home, said it cost me more money to stay here than if I brought myself home. His Papa said, well, it's okay with me. He wrote him back, they get somebody who wrote fun because he don't know how to wrote nothing. <laughs> well, everybody read that postcard in the whole neighborhood, you know, the whole community in when Christmas time comes, Papa had told them all, and they roast a couple of great big hogs. Not like this, a great big, not a P.I.G. hog, a great big hog. <laughs> and everybody's there. And then Papa greet him, kiss him on both cheeks. Whoo, I'm glad for you to see me and all them kind of thing. He says, son, I know you're so smart, you've been to L.U.S. What you learn? Oh, he say, Papa, don't talk like that. He been there just long enough to get embarrassed, you know? He say, look, son, what you been studying there? He say, well, I study algebra. He said, well, said something in algebra. <laughs> he said, Papa, there ain't no way to said something in algebra. He said, you better said something in algebra because if you don't, you ain't gonna be able to go to LUS or someplace else, I guarantee. <laughs> he said, okay, pi or square. His <laughs> Papa said, look at that, been gone four months, don't know nothing yet. Everybody know pi or round, cornbread or square. Now, what I got to did right here, you know, you, you dress a pig by undressing him. And that's what I done did, done undress him. I want to clean him all good. This little pig is just as clean. He's just in real good shape. Now, we're gonna, we've sewed this pig up part of the way, and we're gonna sew him up some more of the way. Let me show you how we did that. We're gonna sew him up some more, just as soon as I put some dressing in there. But first of all, before I did that, I want to put a little garlic on him. Ooh, boy, got it right here. This is the cause of twin beds, this garlic. <laughs> Put a little clove under that arm. 
Put another little clove under that one right there. <laughs> Get this ham back here. Put that clove down in there. Put the clove there. And I'm gonna drop a clove in the cavity, body cavity, way up that way. And one way back this way. And that six clove of garlic is big enough for that little fella. Let me wipe him off again. I don't want him to look like that. <laughs> now, we're gonna get back to him in just a minute. But what I got to did is make recipe for about this, uh, a recipe for them uh, dressing, how you call, for about a 10 or 12 pound pig like that. Now, in this little pan I got right here, that's some cornbread I made and I done put in there. You know, I need that. I got some light bread that I done put in the oven just to get hard enough for me to crumble real good. All that's all ready to go. Now I got a few little things I got to put on that. Mm hmm. <laughs> like two cup of chopped onion, we put that on there. One cup of sari, chop up pretty good fine. Then we got uh, some green onion. We put that on now. That's a cup of green onion. And one uh, pretty good sized bell pepper, we chop him up real good too. Then we got some of them sage. You got to be careful with this now, I guarantee. <laughs> Don't you messing around and put too much sage because all you taste is sage. So I'm gonna put about three quarters of a teaspoon. That's a little bit over half a teaspoon. Put that on there. And I got to kind of mix that around a little bit. I got some parsley I'm gonna put on that. Then because this is pork that we're cooking, we're gonna put some garlic in this dressing. Pork without garlic, I'd just soon not have, I'll guarantee. <laughs> now I'm gonna put a little salt on that. I'm gonna put three teaspoons of salt. <laughs> oh, that's a teaspoon, where that teaspoon measure is. I'm gonna show you that that's a teaspoon right there. A teaspoon full of salt. <laughs> and one, two, Three teaspoons full of salt. <laughs> I'm gonna make that around it. Now, I got some stock what I made over here. And, and what I made from this stock, I made this stock from that is there. I got a pound, about a pound of, of pork and cut it up real good, lean pork. And I put a half a stalk of celery on that. And then I hauled off there and put just a little bit of garlic on that, and that's all. And I'm gonna put this over here where I can mix it a little bit better. Move this part back here like this. I'm gonna put this, this hot, yeah. Turn that off and put this stock right in there. Now I cook this about an hour, just about an hour. Come out of there. See that good cooked pork? Whoo, boy, that's fine. I guarantee. Now that makes this able for me to mix this a little bit more. I guarantee. Now, I'm gonna go back over to this other table here because I got to put some more stuff on that. Hmm. Just happened to have a little sauteed wine. <laughs> and a little lean, what the, how you call that, Worcestershire? Put that on there, parin. One tablespoon, huge turnspoon. Turn it up just at least a little bit. Put that there. Put that on there, get out of my way. And I pour that on there too. Now if this still is not enough juice, I'm gonna haul off there and put some hot water, but I think this is gonna be just about right because I've got to add some egg on there. Yep, it'll be just about right when I get the egg. I don't want that, 
I don't I want it kind of stiff because I got to put it on them PIG hog there, you know? Move this out of my way and see if I can't get these eggs going right. Now, four eggs I'm gonna put on there if I beat the daylight out of them. <laughs> no shell in the egg. No one did that, I guarantee you. <laughs> Anything I hate worse than that, I don't know, it's crunched down on a shell. We got to beat it up a little bit. You know, when you make eggnog, you beat them egg like that too, only you took the white out of that. Beat that, put that on that so nice. Mm -hmm. Them onion open my sciences up, I'll get on people. Mm. Stir that into that good old dressing. You don't need to add any more water to this because it's you want to keep it stiff enough to put on them PRG hog. I guarantee, whoo -wee. I think I'll just eat this like it is. You know, a lot of people do, they like that. Now, come here, little fella. You're such a nice little boy. You got to put them salt and pepper on that too. But right now, I'm gonna put some of that, I'm gonna stuff this PIG hog. Ooh-wee, that look good. You got to shove a little bit up in that chest cavity. Get that up in there like that. Oh, man. And I'm gonna lay this pig up real quick. Now, I'm gonna tell you a story while I'm doing this. In World War Twice, I got a friend that lived down South Louisiana. He's Cajun. <laughs> And he lived down South Louisiana, and somebody tell him, if you enlist in the Coast Guard, they're liable to send you close to home. <laughs> he said, I'm gonna did that. So he enlists in the Coast Guard, and they sent him to Groton, Connecticut. <laughs> Way up north, north of Shreveport, I guarantee you. <laughs> Man. He go up there, Grotonk, in Grotonk, Connecticut, and he get his boot training, how they call that stuff. And he get through it just at Christmas time, just before Christmas, and they send him back to Biloxi, Mississippi. Whew, man, that's close to home, 92 miles from where he lived. You see right there, that's a skewer, that's what that is, just a little old skewer. He's in the Biloxi, Mississippi, and he's happy because he knew when he got off the train, he got a three-day pass coming to him, he can go to his house for Christmas. And when he get off, one of them chief petty officers is wait right there. He say, you true with your boot train? He say, you doggone rat. <laughs> he say, you just think you're true with your boot training. You got some more stuff you got to did. He say, well, let's did it, because I got to go to the house. <laughs> He said, okay, you met me tonight at 10 o'clock out that big searching light where we look for them submarine out there in Mississippi Sound in the Gulf of Mexico. And you go ahead and finish your boot train tonight and you'll get you past tomorrow. He said, I'll be there. What time? 10 o'clock? He said, that's right, 10 o'clock. <laughs> he said, I'm going to be there. 10 o'clock, he was there. And that chief petty officer was there too. I care on thee. He look over that big searchlight, that thing must have been 10 feet across both ways. <laughs> he say, he turned that switch on, he say, you see them light? He said, there ain't no way to miss that. <laughs> he said, okay, I want you to climb up on them light and walk out there about the mile, then turn yourself around and brought yourself back. The little kid and say, I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> he said, how come you ain't gonna do it? He said, I just ain't gonna do it. He turned the light off, he said, I don't want to got some argue with you. But you better walk out, if you don't, you're gonna get court marshal. He turned back on, he said, now, walk out there on them light. He said, I ain't gonna do it. He said, just walk out there and turn yourself around when you get about halfway back, and come on, come on back here. He said, I ain't gonna do it. 
He said, how come you ain't gonna do it? He said, I walk out there about halfway and you turn that doggone thing off. That's how come I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> you notice how I got them skewered through there? So pretty. Now what I got to do is lace it just like a boot. If I can get this string tied, now I got it. You see that right there? Come down just like a boot. Them old hooking eye. You don't need that eye. There you go. You'll need the hook, the eye, the hook, and the eye. And you go back. What you do, you pull him tight. Went right in my eye then. You pull him real tight there. So you don't lose that dress, and you don't want to lose that, no. Ooh, ooh wee. It's a good surgical job. <laughs> Hook your eye. All the way plumb. Come on, boy. Hold still there. <laughs> Got you. Get every one of them there just right, because if you don't, she won't hold, and you got to hold. You don't want to lose that dressing. All right, now, this is just what I'm looking for. This last one, right there. Then I cut them string off, leave enough there for me to work with, and I tie it off right here, just like this. Put two knots on that. Then I take this little P.I.G. hog, get him straight again, and I put him on a baking pan, what I got fixed right here. Ooh. Get this stuff out of my way. I put him on this baking pan, real nice. I put that in his mouth there so I can put an apple in when he's done. Slide him over here. I've got a couple little things I got to put on him. If I can just get him over this hump. Now, <laughs> he's fall as you can tell that, you know. And I got right chill. You guessed it. A couple of cups of onion chopped up. Don't be turned over on your side on me like that, pig. Now, now you got it. Now you're going, boy. A couple of cups of onions chopped. Not too fine, but fine enough. Two cups of salt turned wine. <laughs> and four cups of water. Now you put that pig, after you put a little uh, Worcestershire, what you want to put in there is about a tablespoonful, something like that. <laughs> and you salt and pepper that rascal too. Put a little salt all over here, pat it in. Put a little salt in that juice because you get him that way. And uh, of course, red pepper. You want to be careful with this. Just use as much as you want. <laughs> and then, you wipe that off your hands. Best thing to do is kind of rinse it off the least a little bit. And then dry your hand. Put this out of your way. And you cook that pig in an oven about 325, 350 degrees for about 20 minutes to the pound. Just about 20 minutes to the pound. And this little rascal, I'd cook him about four, four and a half hours. That's how long I'd cook him. Now, I'm just gonna move this pig way over here, out of my way. And I'm gonna show you something else. We're gonna garnish this pig with some sweet potato, yam, what we fix. 
And I'm gonna show you how we fix the, the shell to put them in. This is the easy way. Of course, if you don't have a hangover, you can do them like this. <laughs> but that ain't the easy way. The easy way is just to trim that shell, make those notches on there like that, and then we stuff them. Get out of there. We stuff that with sweet potatoes or yams, whatever you want to call them. And we put marshmallow on top of that. And we're going to put that around this PIG hog. Let me get this stuff out of my way. Now. Now I'm going to go over here and show you a pig that's already fixed. Mm-hmm. We're gonna haul off there and decorate him. These are raw carrots. Most of them make things look pretty. You could cook them if you would like to. It wouldn't make any difference if you wanted to cook them. Turn them over so they look prettier. Parsley. Green and pretty. Put them parsley around there. Put that there. Put this apple on his mouth. Open your mouth there, boy. <laughs> there, the apple in his mouth. Got it all did right there. <laughs> now we're gonna put some more. Uh, you see, see them orange what we got right there? Put them around here. And what you do, you run these orange stuff with, with that uh, good old Louisiana yam. You run them in the oven until the, 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 the because you got the yam already cooked. You run them in the oven until the marshmallow melt real good on there. Then of course we got to put these cherry around here because they're so pretty. Tastes good too. With the green, and so put it Christmas time, I guarantee. And he might just as well, uh, while I'm at it, I'm gonna give him my eyeball. Get in there. We're not on this side so we can see both ways. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's so pretty. I guarantee. <laughs> Man, if them Cajuns inside Louisiana could see me right now, they'd come in here and take this away from me. You know that? Oh, <laughs> now that's pretty. I got a couple of these left over. I just don't want to, I think I got them arranged just right. I don't want to mess with them. Now, I'm going to take this over here. I'm stopping right here. That's eggnog I got fixed right there. I may just get a little sip of that before I have my dinner. Let me put this wine over here, right over here out of the way. Be sure I get them PIG hog on the table real good. I declare that little. Now, to carve this pig, I'm not gonna do that right now because it just looks so pretty, I don't want to disturb it. You carve them any way you would like, right here on the there's the hog jowls. That's wonderful. You can start there. You can take a shoulder, cut that off, start sliding that up any way you would like. That's wonderful there. Come back here and get a, a hind quarter ham. That's wonderful. You can eat that too. Right here in the back is the loin, or what we call the backbone too, you know, that's the loin. And that is really good. I guarantee. Mmm. Might just as well get a little sip of this eggnog. You know that's pretty. Put this down here. Yeah, I got something I want to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, boy. <laughs> you know, I got a friend that was away from home at Christmas time, and I don't even know how he find this place, so Atlantic, Georgia. <laughs> but he was there. <laughs> And he wanted to go home for Christmas and quick because he, he felt bad about being that far away from home. So he went to the airport. 
there in uh, Atlantic, Georgia, and he saw a man behind a desk, and there wasn't many people around there. It wasn't busy yet. So he could walk up to him, and he say, uh, my friend, you got some plane from Atlantic to New Orleans, huh? Whoo, he said, of course, we got all kind of plane. He said, what time the next one left Atlantic? He said, 9.25. He said, and uh, get to New Orleans? He said, 9.26. And he don't tell me about that hour different in time, you know. <laughs> he said, thank you very much. And he turned around and walked off. And he wait till a new man get back there, what he ain't never see before again, you know. And he walk up to him. He said, my friend, you got some plane from Atlantic to New Orleans, I guarantee. Oh, he said, of course we got all kind of plane. He said, what time the next one left Atlantic? He said, 925. And he said, and get to New Orleans? He said, 926. He don't say a word, he just wheel and walk. <laughs> he wait until he get real bent. And man, he just got to get to New Orleans. He pick out a man what he ain't talked with before, though. And he walk up and say, my friend, I know y'all got plane for New Orleans from Atlantic High. Oh, the fella said, hey, you know right, I guarantee we got that. <coughs> he said, okay, what time the next one left here for New Orleans? Well, he said, it left Atlantic. He, let me see, and he turned through the book. He don't know nothing. He's brand new on the job. He said, it left here at 925. He said, what time did it get to New Orleans, my friend? He said, 9.26. He said, whoo, man. This ticket agent said, you want a ticket? He said, no, I don't want no ticket. But I'm going to stood right here and watch that son of a gun take off. I guarantee you. <laughs>